Well, hello there, church. It's so good to have you with us today. I'm so excited that you've joined us, that you're with us online, and we really want to welcome you to the service today. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to interact with us. So why don't you share this service on whatever platform you're on. Just click on the share button and share it. And then maybe leave us a comment. Let us know that you're listening. Let us know that you're there. We want to know that we're not just talking to an empty camera, to an empty room. We want to hear your voice. So let us know how you're doing. Let us know how it's going with you. Let us know that you're listening. We'd really appreciate it. Before we jump into the service, I'd love to thank those of you that are continuing to give and to tithe into the house. Thank you so much for your continued support in the vision that we believe that God has called us to here in Mossel Bay. What you are doing is enabling us to continue ministering and reaching the same way we have always done, but just with a different platform. Thank you so much. If you would like to give, if you would like to tithe, if you would like to sow into the vision of New Life Church, we've got easy platforms for you to do that. There's a snap scan that you can snap and scan and give right away. Or there's an EFT that you can set up as well from your online banking. Both of these are safe and secure. And we trust that you'll be led by God as you sow into his house and into the work that he's called us to do. Before we go into worship, I want to remind you of something. In Psalm 24, verse 3 to 6, it says this, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? Only those whose, hearts and ha whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. It's so scary hearing those words and thinking, I've told a lie, I've fallen short. But thank goodness Jesus came and his hands were pierced and his heart stopped beating so that you and I can have pure hands and a clean heart before God. If we would only accept him. And then the promise that stands for us is in Psalm 24 verse 6 here. It says, such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Why don't you and I worship in the presence of our God? Let's worship Him for real. Let's not just watch somebody else sing a song. Let's not just listen to how good the voices are of those that are singing, but let's actually engage in worship. Let's stand up. Let's worship God where we're at. And let's be in His presence. Be found near Him. Father, I pray that as we worship you today, that we may be in your presence, that we may be surrounded by your goodness, that as we worship you, God, we may find ourselves in a place that is nearer to you, God, and further from the worries and the troubles that we have, that we may find ourselves in your presence for real, God, not just a hype, not just a feeling, God, but Father, that we may be near to where you are and hear your voice as we worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together, church. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep. My faith will stand. Come on, you make it your prayer. And I will call upon your name, Jesus. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace.
remembering a time when I was younger and I was I love the sea I love the ocean and and we went with our family to wilderness and the wilderness sea can be quite rough and unforgiving and I remember me and my dad swimming into the ocean and we swam quite deep and we found ourselves in a cross current and it was ready to be one of those bad stories and I remember that I, I, I was swimming and swimming but I, I lost my strength and my dad just said to me just grab a hold of my neck and shoulders and I'll swim you to the safe side. And I remember holding on to my dad and the moment I held on to him, I could relax and I knew that everything was going to be okay. I don't know what deep waters you may find yourself in. 
I don't know how crazy the storm and right you may seem. I know that in this season, many of us have experienced anxiety. We've experienced fear. But I want to remind you of this, that our Father is always a safety for us. That He is with us in the storm. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. He is always near to those who need Him. And today, you need to grab out and hold on to Him. You need to look to Him. You see, Peter, Peter stepped out of the boat. He stepped on the, onto the water in the middle of a storm and he walked towards Jesus. And like me and you, his faith failed him and fear came to him. But who was there? Jesus was there to grab his hand and to lift him up. Jesus is there to grab your hand, to lift you up, to lift you out of your fear, to lift you out of your storm and to let you know that he will guide you to safety. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with what you're going through? Just reach out to God right now. Father, I thank you so much that your word doesn't return void, God. And I know that sitting at home right now, we have so many people that are experiencing anxiety, experiencing stress, are worried about the future. Maybe they're in storms that they never expected. But God, I know that you are the good father that always makes a way for us to get safe. I know that you are the good father that is always there in the middle of the storm that we can reach out to and you will lift us up. You will keep us from drowning. You will take us to the safe area. So Father God, I pray for those at home. I pray that even right now, they may experience your peace. They may experience your comfort and know that you are near to them. You are not far. And Lord, may they be able to go out and face the world knowing that they do so with you and with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's watch church news and see what's happening in church this week. Hi, I'm Sugain. I am Michael. And, and welcome, welcome to, to church, church news. news. Growth Track is taking place this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And you want to ask the question, what is Growth Track? Well, Growth Track gets you connected to the life of the church and gets you growing. So you do not want to miss out. All you need to do is send your name with the word grow to the number on the screen and we will slot you in this week. Ladies, I know you have been waiting for the perfect opportunity to dress up, put on those new high heels, do your makeup, make your hair beautiful. Today... I'm bringing good news because on the 4th of July, we'll be hosting our first online ladies event, Sparkle. I know you're dancing and I know you're excited and wondering, how do I even register? It's simple. All you need to do is go to our website at www.newlifeonline.co.za. A reminder that registration closes on the 2nd of July. So don't miss out. Head over and register today. On Saturday, the 18th of July, we have a Zoom meeting with the one and only Brunt Pretorius, the former MD of Toyota South Africa. This will be open to everyone. And all you need to do is save the Zoom meeting ID on the screen right now, and let's get ready to grow and get better. Let's go into our week loving people into a relationship with God. Let's each one reach one and keep shining for Jesus. Thank you for watching Church News. Hey church, warm greetings. Let's feed our faith today. Kerry Newoff is a church commentator and a church leader from North America. And uh, last week he, he wrote this concerning lockdown and uh, living, you know, life under lockdown and COVID-19. He said, we're all more than a little fatigued, frazzled and irritated. He said, and everybody, including me, is looking for some semblance of normal. Everything in you wants to go back to as much normal as you can possibly find. And I'm sure most of us would look at, listen to that and say, Amen, Amen. COVID uh, lockdown living has uh, really uh, made us a little bit uh, fatigued, frazzled and irritated. But the current hard and harsh reality is that we are still living under these two severe storms, uh, a health storm and an economic storm. Let's not be like Trump that you try and deny it 
uh, you try and ignore it. You, uh, you know, you play it down, you downsize it. Um, it's the current reality that we are facing and we are currently living, they say, in the world, in, in the worst uh, health storm that the world has had for 100 years, which is causing the worst economic storm in the past 90 years. Uh, these are the facts of life on planet Earth today. Now, I've been told, don't be so negative. Just, just walk by faith. Just trust God. Don't be so fearful. And I, w I want to say this today. It's got nothing to do with being fearful. My, bi my Bible tells me that uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we want to claim that sound mind in Jesus' name for all of us. This is not a bung mark prayer. This is about us facing reality as it is. Was Joel negative when he warned the children of God to prepare for war? Was Joseph being negative when he warned the, the Egyptians to, pray, to, to prepare for uh, the years of, uh, tough years that lay ahead? Was Jesus being negative in Luke chapter 21 when he taught on the end times? In fact, he said there will be, great, there will be earthquakes, there will be famines, and there will be pestilences, he said, in various places. And I, I didn't know what a pestilence was. Looked it up in the Amplified Bible, which is a, a translation, a direct translation from the Greek manuscripts. It says a pestilence is a plague or malignant and contagious or infectious epidemic disease which uh, are already deadly or devastating. Well, sounds very much like a COVID-19 bug to me. But in verse 19, Jesus says, Stand firm and you will win life. So please understand, this, this is not about bunkering down, living in fear, hibernating for the next several years, hiding uh, from the world. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with us surviving these storms, with being prepared and surviving these storms as best as we can. I want to survive the storms. I want my family to. I want you to. I want the church to. So we want to keep walking uh, in our God-given common sense and God-given wisdom so that we can be better navigate uh, these two, this two-headed giant that is facing us right now. So our anchor verse this morning, Colossians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Rooted, built up, established, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Four points I just want to highlight here quickly. Number one, Jesus Christ. As you have therefore received Jesus Christ, my question to you is, have you received him? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? The greatest decision any human being will ever make while they live on this planet. Not only affects your life down here, but it'll affect your eternal destination as well. You see, as bad as these two storms are that we are currently enduring, there's a worse one coming. The Bible talks about the day of judgment. There's a storm of judgment coming upon every single human being that has lived on this planet. We're going to stand one day before God. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. So you and I will be standing before God to give an account of how we lived our life on this planet. But the kicker is this, that the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. And the Bible says that according to God's standard that he sets for a human being to live on this planet, we have all fallen short. Because of our sin, because of the sin in our lives, we've all fallen short. We, you might think, well, you're not as bad as your next door neighbor. You're not as bad as your, 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 your siblings, your family, uh, your friends. It doesn't matter. According to the standard God has set, we all fall short, the Bible says. So we need a Savior. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So 
My question to you is, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? And if not, I want to encourage you, keep watching, because at the end of the message, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. So, as you have therefore received Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk in Him. Point number two, continue to walk in Him. Continue to walk in Jesus. We follow Him. We follow His teachings. He's our Lord. He's our Master. We cannot put Christianity on hold. We cannot hibernate for the next couple of years. We continue to move forward. We continue the Great Commission, the Great Commandment. They're not under lockdown. We continue to serve God by loving Him and by making disciples as best as we can. So we continue to move ahead. We continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we continue to go on with ever-increasing faith. We continue to press on to lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has laid hold of us. So keep on walking in Jesus, with Jesus. Point number three, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith. You know, having grown up on a farm and having farmed for several years, uh, you, you, you get to know the importance uh, of uh, roots to a tree. Very, very important. You learn quickly that the strength and the, the stability of a tree has got to do with its roots. You also find out very quickly that um, the quality of the fruit is very dependent on how healthy the root structure is of a tree. So trees with poor or shallow root systems are first to fall over in a storm. Trees with poor or shallow root systems don't produce good fruit. How healthy are your roots in God today? And because the farmer knows that the healthier the, the roots are, the healthier the tree and the safer the tree and the sturdier the tree will be, you invest energy and you invest finances in getting good roots, getting the trees to have good root structure. Now, how do we get our roots in good uh, shape? I'm glad you asked the question. I want to share very quickly five simple steps to a stronger root structure. Number one, prayer. Very simple. We need to develop a healthy prayer habits. Charles, uh, Charles Spurgeon said that prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Wow, that's a powerful uh, uh, quote on the power of prayer. John uh, Wesley said, God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. We pray. We speak to our Heavenly Father. Um, Maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening. I prefer, I don't, I don't have one specific time of spending, you know, 20 minutes or half an hour in prayer with God. I speak to God from the morning until the evening. I just want to live in communication with God in daily communication as, much, as long as I can, as much as possible in a day. I love my wife. I don't just spend 10 minutes speaking to her in the morning or in the evening. I talk to her throughout the day. We're in conversation. So develop a prayer habit. Number two, stay in God's Word. Get to know the God of the Bible. As Smith Wigglesworth said, we cannot get to know God by sentiment or by feelings. We get to know God through the Word of God. And, you know, God is not who we think He is. God is who the Bible teaches us He is. And the Bible is full of real people uh, living in the real world, facing real problems. And it tells us how God helped them and we can learn from that and we can be encouraged and we can be inspired and we can be strengthened uh, and it helps us to better persevere when we see what God did for his other children. And the third simple step to a strong roots system is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit, live in the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, continue being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible encourages us. You see, for roots to grow, and for roots to be healthy, they need water. They need water. I want to show you a photo you're going to put up. Uh, and I want you to notice something. This photo uh, says a million things. And it, it speaks volumes. If you can see 
where are the trees growing? Where are the green trees? They're next to the water. They're next to the rivers, the streams. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit comes to refresh us. He comes to revive us. He is the river of life. As rain is God's gift to a thirsty world, the Holy Spirit is God's gift to a thirsty world. Soul. Jesus stood up in, in John chapter 7, we read, it says, Jesus stood up with a loud voice and said, Let anyone who is thirsty come uh, to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. There's a picture in, in the Ezekiel where Ezekiel sees a vision of, of a river flowing from the temple of God. And uh, which speaks of the Holy Spirit. And, and Ezekiel says that wherever the river flows, it brings life, it brings healing, and it brings fruit. So allow the Holy Spirit to nourish and feed your roots. Number four, stay connected. These are steps to, to, for us to grow our roots, to keep our roots healthy, to keep them in good shape. Number four, uh, stay connected to God's family. We need each other. When times are tough, family needs to stick together. You know, next time you're brying, take a coal from, from off the coals and put it on the side and you'll see how quickly that coal loses uh, its warmth and how quickly the fire goes out. And then you put it back with the other coals and you see how quickly it lights up, it fires up and it, sh and it just goes warm again. I remember years ago a sheep farmer in the Karoo telling me we were driving on his farm uh, in the Karoo and he said, he told me, he said, that it's very easy to spot a sick sheep. He said, a sick sheep isolates itself from the flock. Don't isolate yourself from the flock. This is a time when we need each other as the family of God. You know, the Bible teaches us there are several dozen one another teachings uh, to encourage us as the family of God. I can't go through them all. Let me just mention a few. Love one another. Love one another. Encourage one another. When last did you pick up a phone? Remember we, we spoke about, a couple of weeks ago, I spoke about each one, reach one. Whether we do it uh, once a day or a few times a week, but when last did you phone someone or just send them a text and just encourage them? Say, can I pray for you? How are you doing? Encourage one another. And then there's one that says, spur one another on towards love and good deeds. It's a great time now. Uh, to be uh, involved in good deeds, helping people that are less fortunate than us. Pray for each other. There's several dozen, as I said, of the one another teachings. Uh, that's what family does. And that's what we need to do at New Life as well. And then the fifth simple step to a strong root system. Number five is continue to serve God. We continue to serve God. We serve God by serving people. And at New Life, uh, the volunteers are still active. And we need more volunteers. So if you want to volunteer, it's not about coming into crowds. Uh, it's still about social distancing. But if you want to volunteer, um, there are many ways you, you, you can do it. But, but call Basil and uh, he'll be able to help you. So back to Colossians chapter 2. Rooted and built up and established in the faith. As you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. You know, Paul lived his life. He lived with an attitude of gratitude. Let me just give you some figures here. In his, in his epistles, nine times he says, I thank. 73 times he says, thanks. 30 times he says, thanksgiving. He used the word thanksgiving. Three times you'll see the word thankful. Over 100 references to uh, prove just what an attitude of gratitude Paul lived with. One of those, he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do you know what makes God angry? It's good that we know that because, you know, if we're trying to live lives that bring pleasure to God's heart, that please Him, we need to know what angers God as well. One of the things you can find in Numbers chapter 11. Now the people complained about their hardships. And when God heard it, 
His anger was aroused. Let's choose to live with an attitude of gratitude. I believe it pleases God. Let me finish off. The world's leading health uh, officials and the world's leading economists have issued two severe storm warnings. And these two storms have the potential to knock the stuffing out of any believer if we are not careful. Our health minister this week, Dr. Mkizi, said that we are heading for a decimating and devastating storm. The worst is far from over. There are Christians today that are battling to stay mentally healthy. There are Christians that are starting to feel hopeless. There are Christians who are beginning to feel their faith is slipping, getting weaker. I want to say this emphatically. We can look forward to the future with a confident hope and with a positive faith. With God in our lives and with God in our corner, all things are possible. We all have had to uh, reboot for this new reality. Individually and uh, corporately as the church. Individually, we, we're wearing masks. I mean, our children are going to be telling their children's children in years to come, in decades to come, of a time when you had to wear a mask to go to the shops. It, it hasn't happened in the world for 100 years. If you go back to 1980, Google 1918 masks and you'll see people wearing masks back then around the world. It hasn't happened in 100 years. But we've had to deal, we've had to accept this new reality. Wearing masks, washing our hands regularly, distancing, living, having that two meter bubble space around us. Very important. The church, you know, online, if you told me four, years, uh, four months ago that we're gonna be doing church online this year, I would have asked you what, you know, what you're smoking. We, we, we've, we've, had to, we've had to adapt to these new realities. We've, we've done a, a wedding and a funeral uh, recently. And these two events in life where you most want to embrace people, just hug people. You can't. But I want to encourage you this morning. But I also want to, I, I feel compelled to warn as well that these two storms are going to continue, they're going to intensify over the coming months, and maybe even year. It is imperative that we as believers dig deep. It is imperative that, number one, we continue to walk in Jesus, continue to walk in Him. It is imperative that we get rooted and built up in and established in the faith. Our, our roots have to go deep into God, deep into the Christian faith, deep into the Word. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to nourish us, refresh us, revive us so that our roots can stay strong. So that no matter how hard this storm blows, we stay standing. Stand firm, Jesus said. We want to stand firm. We want to stay standing. And lastly, in everything, give thanks. Give thanks. God is good. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Basil now. Amen. Our roots need to grow deep. And maybe this is the first time that you, maybe this is the first time that you've heard a message like this, been invited to grow deep roots and you don't know where to start. There's a very simple way to start growing and that's with accepting Jesus as Lord of your life. And we want to we want to invite you to do that today. We want to invite you to do that even though we're not in our church building. We know that Jesus is everywhere and he wants to issue an invitation to you today that says, come and follow me. Come and be part of my family. Let me show you the plans and the purposes I have for you. And I will show you how to dig your roots deep. If you would like to accept Jesus today as Lord of your life, we want you to respond. We want you to respond to His love and pray a prayer that says, God, I accept you as Lord of my life. I want to pray with you right now. Father, we pray for those at home that are choosing to accept you as Lord of their life. Father, may they lay down their old lives and pick up their new lives with you. 
Lord, may they understand what it means to be forgiven, that they are forgiven because of the sacrifice that you made on that cross when you died for our sins. And I pray that they may go on a journey of finding their purpose and digging their roots down deep into your word, that they may grow to be strong and unwaved by the seas, by the land, by the wind, by the circumstances around them, God. May they know what it means to be sure-footed in their faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad that you joined us today, and I'm sure you are glad that you joined in on church online today. We're missing you and we're missing seeing you. So like I said, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of the service. Let us know how you're doing. We really want to have that interaction with you. But I want to leave you with a blessing and a blessing that Paul gives in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. It says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Isn't that beautiful? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You may be missing fellowship in church, missing coffee connection, missing seeing your friends here, but the Holy Spirit always wants to be in fellowship with you and I. So may you this week find yourself in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.